Our goal here is to solve this system of first order differential equations. Um, so what we have is we've got two functions, x1, uh, which we're going to assume is some function of time, and x2, which is also a function of time. And we're trying to find uh, these two functions so that they make both of these equations in this system true. So um, let's begin by noticing that um, if we were to take the right-hand side here of this um, and turn, it, turn this into a matrix times a vector, what we would have is we'd have the matrix negative 7, 8, negative 4, 5 times the vector x1, x2. Um, so the question is, what would be the left-hand side? Well, if, if we de decided that to take the derivative of a vector, uh, we simply take the derivatives of their components, then the left-hand side here would be x1 prime, x2 prime would be a vector. And so we could write this, if we call the vector x1, x2, vector x, then this differential equation um, can be put into the matrix form, uh, x prime equals a times ax. And so this is, this is what we would like to solve. Now, um, if we think about the analogous equation, um, x equals, um, or x prime equals some constant k times x, um, and we wanted to solve this equation, uh, it, it, with a little forethought, we would know what the solution was. But let's, instead, let's guess uh, that x looks like e to the lambda t for some value of lambda. Well, if that were the case, then x prime would be lambda e to the lambda t, which would be lambda x, uh, because e to the lambda t is x. And so what that would mean is that in this case, that lambda would have to equal the value k. All right, so our solution would be um, x equals e to the kt. Now, we would notice, though, that if, if x was to equal some constant, e to the kt, then x prime would be equal to that constant times k times e to the kt, which is then just um, k e to the k, or k times x, because x, remember, is um, c e to the kt. So this would be k x again, okay? Because, again, because this c e to the kt together are x. So not only is e to the kt a solution, but so is any constant times e to the kt. So we could um, extend that analogy to our situation. So we might guess here that um, y, or that our x, in this case the vector x, looks like um, some e to the lambda t. But the problem here um, is that uh, e to the lambda t is a scalar. So it wouldn't make any sense to do the multiplication a times uh, the vector x. So we need to uh, change our guess a little bit. And what we'll guess is we'll actually put the constant in place that we found over here. Um, but the constant in this case will be a vector. So we'll guess that x looks like some constant c uh, e to the lambda t, where c is equal to c1, c2. Those are its components. All right, so what I want to do is, uh, is then put this in to our equation and see what happens. Okay, so um, if this is x, then x prime 
would look like, now the vector c is just a constant, so that would be c times lambda e to the lambda t. And just for clarity, we're actually going to put the lambda in front of the constant. All right? So we've got um, lambda times c e to the lambda t. All right? So that's x prime. So now if we put x, so here's x and here's x prime. And let's put those in to the equation above. So what we have is we've got lambda c e to the lambda t equals um, a times c e to the lambda t. Now e to the lambda t is never 0. So we can divide both sides by it. And so what we end up with is we end up with the equation lambda c equals ac. And you might recognize this from your linear algebra as the eigenvalue eigenvector equation. Okay? So any uh, vector c that satisfies this, um, c and it's, it's not allowed to be 0. Of course, if the 0 vector were put in there, that would be true for sure. So c not equaling 0 that satisfying, satisfies this is an eigenvector. of a, and the value of lambda that works for that particular vector, vector the corresponding lambda is the eigenvector that goes with that, or the eigenvalue that goes with that eigenvector. So it's the corresponding eigenvalue. Now, we'll look later at how to find um, the eigenvectors and eigenvalues. But for this particular um, matrix, it turns out that there are two eigenvalues, two eigenvectors. So there's an eigenvalue I'm going to call lambda 1. And that eigenvalue is 1. And the corresponding eigenvector, or the set of, eigen, set of eigenvectors, would be um, any constant, um, which I'm going to call C1. Now, this will not be the same C1 as in our vector, unfortunately. But let me go with that. Actually, let me call it something else. Let me call it uh, D1. So it'll be a d1 uh, times the vector um, 1, 1. Okay, so 1, 1 is an eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue uh, 1. But any scalar multiple of an eigenvector is also an eigenvector with the same eigenvalue. Uh, our second eigenvalue is negative um, 3. And the corresp a corresponding eigenvector for that is 2, 1. So any scalar multiple d2 of that would also be an eigenvector. <clears throat> so remember um, that this whole story, if we go back up and look here, uh, the whole thing started with this guess. Um, and let me put an arrow in red at it so you see what I'm talking about. We have this guess that x looks some, like some constant vector times e to the lambda t. And we have our two constant vectors. They're d1 times 1, 1, and d2 times 2, 1. And we have our two values of lambda. So we actually have two solutions. But just like uh, when we worked with um, second order differential equations, we, uh, our, our final solution is a linear combination of those. So in this case, um, our x vector, our, our guess, remember our guess was x equals 
c e to the lambda t. Okay, but we've got two lambdas and two two vectors, so our final solution is d1 times 1, 1. e to the lambda is 1, so e to the t, plus d2 times 2, 1, times e to the minus 3t. And that, that is our solution to the original system of equations. So let's come back to that um, on the next page and investigate that a little bit further.